So, I'm back with another one of these things where I talk uncomfortably into the camera for a while about nerdy guitar stuff. Last time we discussed power chords and how their lack of tonality can give you more freedom with your note choices when soloing. If you haven't given that a watch yet, I suggest you go check it out first. I'll stick the link in the description for you. This time, however, we're going to be looking at real chords. Am I a real chord. boy? No, Pinocchio. And how you can use them to easily unlock the whole board. I want to keep these videos pretty short and concise, so I'm going to assume you already have some knowledge of scales, chords, and arpeggios. If not, then go read a book or something, I don't know. Hi little Jimmy, welcome to your guitar lesson. <coughs> right, so first things first. Each note of a major and minor scale has a corresponding chord that goes with it, okay? What the fuck is a chord? And each of these chords are comprised of notes of the scale. I just want to play gym! Now this all sounds a bit confusing, I know, but there's a simple sequence that you can remember which allows you to extract the chords from any major or minor scale, okay? Yeah, but I just want to play gym though! For minor scales, this sequence is minor 7, minor 7 flat 5, major 7, minor 7, minor 7, Major 7, Dominant 7, and back to Minor 7. Okay! I'm using Minor as a primary example here, as I know that most of us are probably sad rock and metal boys. <laughs> Let's apply this to a D minor scale. The notes of a D minor scale are D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, and back to D. And now, if we apply the chord sequence to it, we get D minor 7, E minor 7 flat 5, F major 7, G minor 7, A minor 7, B flat major 7, C dominant 7, and then back home to D minor 7. This sequence works for any regular minor scale. If we now wanted to apply it to E minor, then we would get the chords E minor 7, F minor 7 flat 5, G major 7, A minor 7, B minor 7, C major 7, D dominant 7, and back to E minor 7. Musicians usually learn this to help them with their songwriting abilities, as it can make working out chord progressions much easier. <laughs> but it can also be applied to lead playing to help you unlock more of the fretboard. This becomes clear when you start arpeggiating each chord of the scale. Even though it looks kind of fancy, essentially all you're doing here is playing the notes of the D minor scale over and over again in different orders. Once I realised this, it was a bit of a eureka moment. Oh my! Oh hooray! To help demonstrate this, I'm going to play a lick I've come up with, which gradually travels up the neck across all chord shapes of the D minor scale. <laughs> Now I know this example isn't very musical, but hopefully you can see how this concept can be applied to easily move between different positions of a minor scale. The same sequence can also be applied to major scales, except the third chord of the minor sequence becomes the root chord of the major sequence. Did this lesson change your life? Do you have any questions? Do you have any- Jim! Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with new videos.